Glasgow is a place of stark, clashing contrasts. If such contradiction is the stuff of drama, creation, imagination, Glasgow has all that compacted intensely. It's commerce, it's industry, it's learning, and it's people, it's violence and tenderness, and great warm-heartedness. I'm R.D. Lang, and I lived in the city for the first 25 years of my life. in the Glasgow Civic Centre, opened in 1888 by Queen Victoria, a fitting expression of Glasgow at its most prosperous, optimistic and opulent, when it was the second city of the greatest empire of the 19th century. When the city chambers were being built, a quarter of the city of Glasgow lived in tenement blocks like this, except that this is a particularly nice example. The worst of them have been torn down. Tenement block, typically four stories. You enter it by a close. And from the close, uh, each of the four levels are four doors leading into four separate small single rooms. In each of these single rooms, a whole family would live, seven to 15 people, and they would count themselves lucky to have a roof over their heads. They came in their thousands, from the Western Isles, from the Highlands, from Ireland, driven by starvation and poverty to provide the cheap labor force upon which Glasgow based its prosperity, factory fodder.
When these places were first built, no water, no plumbing, no bath, no lavatory, no uh, taps. Excrement was thrown out the window. People suffered from chronic malnutrition and vitamin deficiencies. It produced, for instance, the Glasgow type, the stunted Glasgow wee backle who had never grown because his bones hadn't been formed bow-legged, and the hard heat that you used to butt people with in fights. Darkness, desolation, life pared down to the bone, mere existence, bare survival, culture. Where in this world is any place for Bach or Chopin? I wasn't born in a slum. I was born in this respectable neighborhood, not 200 yards down there. People here could move in this direction or that direction, but never in that direction. If I ever dreamt of going down there, I could be thrashed by my father to within an inch of my life because my parents were terrified that if I ever went down there, I would contract some of the contagious, unspeakable, uh, unmentionable, unimaginable infectious diseases that uh, people down there were riven and rotten with. This is where I was born. This is my close. This is where I lived for the first 23 years of my life. And here, Imagination and culture were just feasible, just possible. My mother played the piano and uh, I later played it and my father sang. In fact, he was the first person to sing a song in Italian over the Scottish radio. I don't think this is a God-forsaken hole now, but my God, I often thought it was then. How was I ever going to get out of it? Imagination the mind, books, a public library just across the road. And on top of it, an angel in the sky I could gaze at from my bedroom window. Glasgow University was founded 500 years ago, converting Glasgow from a market and cathedral town to a great centre of learning and research. Ever since its foundation, it's continued to play a key part in Glasgow and Scottish life. I came to the university because I wanted to study the facts of life, particularly those facts that are tucked away from ordinary human observation. Uh, the beginning of our life, the end of life, birth, 
death and the extremes of mental and physical affliction. I was driven both by curiosity and by the hope that I might uh, be able to make some contribution to the amelioration of human misery. It gives me great pleasure to uh, welcome to speak second for the opposition, Mr. John O'Dowd. <laughs> The student union's always been good for a real free-for-all debate. What will the feminists make of this scene? Here are the future husbands of the young Glasgow female intelligentsia. In Glasgow, the sexes are almost two different species, as far as the men are concerned, anyway. But there's nothing that the SRC can conduct to which will surprise any of us, because they have been meddlesome, because they have been meddlesome mudlocks for as long as I can remember. And you know... The male students have total control of their own union. The only one left in Britain that's not, as one says, mixed. I admire the way the young lady stands up to it all, unabashed, undeterred. This outside this university wouldn't have such opinions if it wasn't for troublemakers like you and that side of the house stirring up trouble, deliberately calling in the press this nonsense. <laughs> People are shot by it and they have a right to know what's going on. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What have we got here? We've got a bunch of mammy boys from broken homes. <laughs> around Glasgow, one might not sense the wildness, the passion of the city. We haven't tribal dances or Mardi Gras or Saturnalia, even witches' Sabbaths now. But for the men at least, there are football matches. No more gladiators, Christians to the lions. But the next best thing in these times of tranquility and peace
kids in Glasgow are lucky to have so many open spaces to play in these days where so much of the city is being torn down for redevelopment just now. I wasn't uh, allowed out to play until I went to school when I was five and then what a fantastic delight it was. Such drama in human children's play. I was first married when I was 11 years old in a children's playground at a ceremony attended by 30 of our friends. But Helen started Latin a year ahead of me and I couldn't keep up with her. I'd married above my intellectual station and the marriage broke up a year later. used to come here on Saturday afternoons without my mother. He said it was for the exercise, but my mother said it was for the sex. A question a good Christian boy should ask himself, dancing a slow fox trot, was whether he could remember Jesus Christ who died on the cross for him. Of course, there was total body contact all the way up and down. Hence, double-breasted suits just to avoid any embarrassment. Glasgow's a city of parks. There are over five dozen parks in Glasgow. And for a city with its reputed violence, it's perhaps uh, surprising that there are such safe places. There are places that the, the young and the old can come and do come without fear, and where lovers can be romantic. A hundred years ago, they introduced bandstands into the uh, parks and every other night of the week during the summer one can go and listen to a band or be entertained by the entertainers. As a city boy grew up among the asphalt, I never need to miss the country with all these parks around. When I was young, 
I put in a few rounds in boxing rings in Glasgow. Too rough and tough for me. Glasgow has a reputation for violence, but thank God the violence has stayed comparatively primitive. Fists, bottles, razor blades, knives, bicycle chains. Mild compared to the most sophisticated things that are thrown around in some cities. No urban guerrilla terrorism has so far developed in Glasgow. Years ago, Glasgow was called the Paris of the North. Sailing up the Clyde was a memorable experience. But Glasgow became a place more of industry than of beauty. my first sample of the world. I looked at the faces of the buildings. What was the mind behind them? What's it all in Edo? What's it all about? What's Glasgow all about? To survive here, elegance had to be really tough. This city gave birth to at least one extraordinary architect though he was never given a real chance to impress his stamp on the city. Rennie McIntosh. The appearance of a place expresses the mind behind it. This place is the library of the Glasgow Art School, designed by Rennie McIntosh and completed in 1909. Here I feel that the tensions of the Scottish character find a perfect synthesis. Its wildness and austerity, its softness and its ruggedness come together in perfect proportion. It's a very congenial place to be in because nothing in it cries out for attention but everything in it is just right and it's more right the more one looks at it is correct however without ever being cold these metal lampshades are metal but they're not metallic. I often wonder why uh, these designers of so much of that high-rise brutalism haven't taken a leaf out of Macintosh's uh, book, but uh, maybe they didn't love, like him, uh, flowers and plants, which he spent so much time as a boy studying, drawing and painting, and ended uh, up uh, painting. One feels that somehow or other he manages to take metal and use it organically and poetically to express through it light and colour and delight.
home of Hugh McDermott, Christopher Grieve, one of Scotland's greatest poets, the little white rose. The rose of all the world is not for me. I want for my part only the little white rose of Scotland that smells sharp and sweet and breaks the heart. Sunday school, I was given that question, what is man's chief end in life? The answer was to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Would you be prepared to boil down into a few words what epitomizes for you the most important thing in life for us creatures beneath the sun? I regard the... <coughs> most important attribute of mankind is imagination. Imagination must find a home for itself in one or other or all of the arts. Constantly I regard the development of the arts, whose purpose is the increase of human consciousness, as the most important thing in life. Any Perhaps genius has something to do with being able to live out in one's own person contradictions and conflicts that can tear whole peoples apart. This incorrigible free thinker also endorses what to most of us seems one of the most repressive regimes in the world, communism. Almost all Scots are fervent Scottish nationalists. However, this sentiment is translated into political terms. But Dermot has given his literary life to writing in a synthetic Scottish language he has virtually invented. Whether this is a lost cause or not, time alone will tell. This is one of the poems I wrote then, and it shows that I wasn't too hopeful, as I'm not too hopeful yet, of the kind of development I wanted to see. It's, called, it's a poem called Lure Down My Heart. Lure simply means heavy, heavy on my heart. Lure down my heart as winter lies, the state that Scotland's in the day. Spring to the north as A comes slow, but new, dour winters like to stay, the good and no for good. Oh, weighs me on the weary days when it is scarce grey or licht at noon, it mun be all the stupid folk diffusing their dullness run and run like soot that keeps the sun licked out. Nay wonder if I think I see a lichter shadow than the east. I'm fain to cry, the dawn, the dawn. I see it bracken in the east. But ah, uh, it's just mere snow. <laughs> Thank you. 
Clyde Side, place of heavy industry, machinery. At one time, 70% of the world's rolling stock came from this area. And at one time, half of the ships sailing the oceans of the world were built in this area. My father and grandfather were Vikings. They didn't regard themselves as Scots. Ships and machinery were in their blood. My father was apprentice in a shipyard before World War I and then went into the war to work with tanks and then with the uh, aircraft instruments. But by the time World War I was over, he had come to detest not only war, but what he felt machinery did to the people who made machines their entire life. John Knox came here after his stint as a galley slave. His statue still looms over the city, and the echoes of his spirit and of the Reformation still thunder here. The vital battle this morning, this great doctrine, of justification by faith alone. Of course, there's a great conspiracy abroad today. The atheists would tell us that the Reformation was a mistake. You go to your ecumenical services and you hear them pray, Lord, forgive us for the sin of our division. I want to tell you with all the force I can bustle this morning. The Reformation was not a sin. The Reformation was not a mistake. But the Reformation was a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God. We thank God in this church for the Reformation. Glasgow's not been a great patron of the arts. Beauty, elegance, grace, proportion have seemed to many Glaswegians almost ungodly, competing with God, or insulting him by gilding the lily, or not being serious enough. About what? That's what I so often wondered. 73, 73, 46, 46. The 
is a painting by Salvador Dali of a vision of St. John of the Cross. It was bought in 1952 for £8,200 and produced a public furor in this city. Many people thought it was ridiculous to throw away £8,000 on a piece of canvas with paint on it and uh, a lot of people uh, thought it was slick. But the main argument was not over its uh, financial value or its uh, artistic merits, but was a theological one. Many people thought it was blasphemous to look down upon, even to imagine looking down upon Jesus Christ. The dead are one of the best views of Glasgow. As a medical student at the Royal Infirmary nearby, I used to munch my lunchtime sandwiches in this distinguished company and brood over what it's all about. To live our lives, the great adventure, fit for any hero, Nothing else can be the point of our seeming mystery. We'd like to think that there's some benefit somewhere to something, someone, to the all, that we are such sacks of comic lust, or good for us that we are thus. At least we're food for worms. However spirit fail, the call of death's a reconciliation for our flesh its contribution to the feast which we partake of. Eater, eaten, beast for beast, from dust to dust, no less, no more. Whatever we've accomplished of futility, we can be sure of death's enforced utility. So what gentleman is man's chief end in life, and woman's? That's a terrible thing to ask a man at this time of the day, or I'm night, sure and I've forgotten about what it's doing. Yeah. Man's chief end, as far as I'm concerned, is to uh, understand more. To understand more? Aye, about the great sad mystery of being a human being. It's a wonderful thing in one way, to waken up every morning and realise you're a human being. On the other hand, it's sad to waken up and realize that by the end of the day, you'll be nothing more than a human being. What more would you wish to be? Oh, a god who knew everything. Who knew everything? A kindly god who knew everything. Kindly god. Yeah. I would Glasgow rather... breeds a unique brand of repartee, conviviality, bonhomie, unpretentious, with no side. There's always the grace of God, or whiskey, or humanity. It's humanity 
with a lot of wit and humour that, for me, is the saving grace of the people of Glasgow. What if man's chief aim is just to get through today and hope that tomorrow will come? Without doing your other fellow man in, in the course of it, I mean, that's yes. very important, yes. isn't it? Yes. I have never struck <coughs> my children under the age of five except in self-defense. Mm. <laughs> well, except in anger. Had... Never hit a child except in anger. No, no, self, no self, self-defense. Self-defense. Because yeah. by the time my children were four, they were taller than me. <laughs> well... <laughs> The largest street market in Glasgow that is busiest on a Sunday afternoon. Looking up for social security, young fella. Six Pretty fast and shrewd, but everyone seems on the same side, all together, all in the same game. The blue one, she says the blue one, will you please carry them to your hands with the alarm, because these handles are detachable, and you may finish up with a 40 piece instead of a 20. Down there, right? Time's changed down there. Thank you very much. They are not stolen. They may not be paid for, but not stolen. Madam, you have given me two five-pound notes. Do you wish your change? Or would you like to leave the three-pound tax change and have a share in the business? You're sure you want your change? It would be a nice wee sun hat, wouldn't it? In fact, I'll tell you, is there any married lady out there would like to make use of that for your liquor store charge? Where's your husband? Are you all ready? Very good. Excuse me, sir, you don't mind my head being your wife's liquor, do you? Nine pounds. Oh, yeah, no charge. In fact, in fact, he's a bite in the talent. He's a bite. Excuse me, young fellow, would you like to feel that lady's knickers are set? Hey, feel him a set. Feel him a set. Your set is up to You don't get a bag, you only get it the way it is, right, Bill? How long have you been a customer of mine? 20 years. You used to buy sundials from me, that man. I'd like you to, to meet my wife, my younger brother here. Put your hand up. He's a school teacher during the week, by the way. He wants to be here Saturdays and Sunday. Look at him. Put your hand up. He's as useless as a one-legged man at an ass-kicking competition. <laughs> Yeah, quickly. Tell me the colour you're after. I'll take four nights in a pair of years. If the hand goes up before three, we're going to disqualify them. You watch. Now, don't put your hand up before three, you'll be disqualified at ten pence each. Once. You're disqualified. You watch it Even with the price of whiskey these days, it's still said that the cheapest and quickest way out of Glasgow is two large whiskies.
a way, there are as many Glasgow's as there are eyes to see it. It's a diamond with as many facets as the people in it. Still, with all its many sides and divisions, Glasgow's still a place that one can enjoy the sense of community, which is something very rare in the great cities of the world now. As a student and later, I had the delightful experience of camaraderie and conviviality. I've never come across quite the same anywhere else. I once asked a man from Liverpool who was uh, living in London why he was living in London, and he, he said he, it was because he wanted to be near the centre of reality. What is the centre of reality? Changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. Well, no Glasgow man would ever dream of leaving Glasgow in order to find the centre of reality elsewhere. Centre of reality is where one's heart is.